is you would want to uh, do what Gibby was talking about and say just put in column titles on the first row. Very common way to do it. Yeah. So. You just do that. So anyway, I want to get the sum. I've got a couple of numbers here. I'll just click. And when I click that, what it does is it, you can see it draws a, a highlight around the group of cells. And then it, I don't know why, I'm, but, oh, just that mouse. Um, then over here we can say that it, what it inserted was equals. Now if you're going to do a function, a calculation, it must always begin with an equals sign. If you don't have the equals sign, the program just thinks you wanted to type something in that box. So the equals sign is a signal that says, I want you to do a calculation here. Now, what calculation is it? It's a sum. So that means we're going to add numbers together. Beginning with whatever is in cell A2, and then I'm going to get rid of the highlight so you can see Then there's a colon. And the colon says we're going to do a range that's inclusive here. So it goes from A2 to A4. We're going to add all of those up. Now, if I like that, I accept it by clicking the check mark. If for some reason it was not what I wanted, I can click that to get rid of it. Or I could just go in here and do an edit and then accept. But in this case, it's OK. So if you find out later you've got to add some more to it, you can extend the range of it. Yeah. So if I do that, for instance, it just says sum A5 to A5. It's just looking at that. Suppose I wanted to go back and say, no, I want to add all of these. Well, I would just go up here, change that to A2, click Accept. Wow. The sum of the sum. <laughs> Yeah. And in fact, you can have calculations in which they're using numbers that result from previous calculations. Mm -hmm. it, you can occasionally get into trouble. Let's say you try to do something like that. You get an error that, uh, I don't remember exactly what the error reads, but it, it's usually something like circular reference. <laughs> you know? And, you know, what that means is that you know, you got your, your wires tangled somewhere in here, and you're trying to use a number in a calculation. It's sort of like, well, the number you're trying to put into the calculation is created with the output of the very calculation you're trying to calculate, and, you know, it's just, that's a mess. So, so that's when you have to sit back and debug your system. So this way, if somebody puts a number in row six, it won't add up. But if you put it in row four, it'll, it'll add up. It will add up. Put a number in row six. That did, and that didn't. So you're correct. Oh, I because what it says here is sum a two to a five. Okay, that's that's why I say a six didn't give you one. Now the the next thing you want to be careful of yeah, no, okay. is the distinction between what you see and what, what the cell contains. Yeah. Yeah, see what you get. All right, what you see is maybe the result of a calculation. There. Yeah. So, you know, when you're trying to figure out what's going on, you sometimes have to just start clicking cells and say, all right, what the heck is in this cell? Because it's causing me grief here. Now, this, is, this something, you know, as, as Gibby said, this is the most frequently used function on mm -hmm. spreadsheets, which is why they put it right here to make it convenient. Yeah. But you've got plenty of functions. Arc, cosine, and, and tangents, and... Uh, you know. What's the multiplication one? 
Is it that? Um, yeah, for, for multiplication, you just conventionally use the asterisk. And there's a product function. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But what that would do, that would be like um, multiplying a whole group of numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like that capital pi that I was talking about. You right. know, here's 30 numbers in a column, multiply them all together and see what the product is. That's what the product function. But if you were just multiplying, you know, A times B, you, I, you probably wouldn't use the product function. Mm -hmm. You'd probably just type in with an asterisk. Um, now, there's a lot of great stuff in here. Uh, some, some of the stuff... Um, Okay, rounding it up to an even integer. They don't have division in it. Round up, rounds down. They don't have division? That's usually with the slash. Slash? Yeah. What's that? Uh, so here, this is a good one, random number. So if you just turn a random number between 0 and 1, and then if you wanted it to be larger, you just multiply it. So if you wanted to you know, pick a number between 1 and 100, take the random function, you know, multiply it by 100, and then see what comes up. And you'd have a number between 1 and 100. Um, Or just a random integer between any two particular numbers, if you wanted to do it. I've, I've used this to create data that I could then use in a statistics class to illustrate something. Um, so it, it, it can be useful to do that. I mean, you can, you can go out and find the data set that perfectly matches the point you're trying to make. But when you're teaching, sometimes it's more convenient to create the data set that illustrates the point you're trying to make. Um, right. So there's, there's a ton of functions. Now, this is mathematical, um, logical, mm. you know. So we can evaluate if a thing is true or false. There are text functions. Here's a very good one. You have two columns. Are they absolutely identical? I can use this function to very quickly go through and compare row by row and see. And you know, if they're the same, it'll return a true. Uh, if they're different, it'll return a false. And I can very quickly see if there's any difference between two columns. Uh, you can do it. It doesn't have to be text. It can be columns and numbers. It's just that it, it uses this function to compare them. All right. So there's a ton of useful. How long do we have? Maybe? Uh, two thirty. Okay, that's good. So, you said an hour and a half. So. Uh, yeah, but I'm all you know. I barely started, and it's okay. Yep. Twenty well, minutes of two. All right. Um, So those are, those are all of the functions that I want to talk about for the moment. Did we want to take a break for a few minutes? Anybody interested in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, next. We'll just, no, I mean, that's fine. We've had there. doing mathematical calculations. All right, I go to cell C2. I'm going to do a calculation. The first thing I do is type in the equal sign because it doesn't know to do a calculation unless I, I do that. Now, 
The way you do this is by using the cell addresses for the numbers that you're going to work on. So if I wanted to multiply, I would go A1. You don't have to capitalize the A. It, it's not a case-sensitive thing. A2 is the thing we're dividing. Uh, oh, A2. You're right. Thanks. Um, say, okay, yeah, that's what I want. Uh, and look what I've got. 12 times 15 is 180. Now, if I want to divide 180 by 3, is that? Six. Okay. Now, order of operations is another thing. Mm. Because multiplication and division are always evaluated before addition and subtraction. But you can control this be more precise and less ambiguous if you use parentheses. So for instance, I could have said, no, what I really wanted to do was take A3 divide by B2 and then multiply. And that becomes something very different. So I'll just put parentheses around those. Now in this case, <laughs> Not a huge deal because it, it didn't matter to the, the associative outcome. property. Right. Um, so if you had something no. where you actually had an addition in there, if that I had an addition be. in there, that would have made a difference. Yeah. Um, but no, if it had anything other than 15, it would be a difference. Make it 16. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to because. Because the math works out either way, it'd be 60, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what I did, if you, if you have a cell, when you move your cursor over the corner, there's this little black square there, that little black square is the handle. Your cursor turns into this plus sign, that means you can click and drag. Right. When you click and drag, what's going to happen? Well, it depends on what's in there. If it's purely text, it'll simply copy that text over and over and over. But it was not text. It was cell references. So here it was A2. When I clicked and drag, it became A3. There was A3. Now it's A4. This was B2. Now it's B3. And I get an error. And why do I get an error? Because it's saying you're trying to divide by zero. There's nothing in cell B3, so that's technically correct. So let's just stick something in there. And that clears that one up. So if you get a divide by zero error, again, what you need to do, you need to go in there and say, okay, what was I trying to do? And, you know, in this case, a cell that has nothing in it is treated as if it's a zero for the purposes of calculation. I didn't see, the last one, I didn't see where the error was. Was ER somewhere? No. In the cell, you see it says the hash mark div slash zero bang. See that in cell C4 right now? Yeah. That's an error. Slash zero one looks like one. Or, or is it no, that's a bang. Oh, okay. I see. And here it looks like a one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what that is, that's a divide by zero error. And that's one of those things you'll see a lot if you spend a lot of time working with spreadsheets. <laughs> this is the most common error you're going to run into. And it's usually something stupid like, oh, okay, I just did a drag and fill. Uh, now, this is a, a very useful technique because when you work with spreadsheets, you don't want to be typing in numbers over and over, particularly if there's just a pattern. Uh, and so using this click and drag is a very good way to just fill a bunch now. You know, 
<laughs> bunch of division by zeros. <laughs> division by zeros, but... Uh, I'll drag the two. Yeah. So what it does, if you just have a, a number, is it will increment the number by one. Which is, can be very useful if that's what you're trying to do. Now I've selected both cells. It's a very different result. If you select two cells, what it's doing is it's saying, okay, we had a three, the following cell was a two, so you went down by one. So it's decided that must be the pattern you want. Go down by one each row, so as I click and drag, it's one, zero, minus one, minus two, so on. Hmm. I wonder how good it is at recognizing patterns. Uh, it only I, looks I at, no idea it looks at two cells and takes a look at the difference between the two cells. Okay, so it don't do more than two. No. Okay. If you had something trickier, you'd have to see if it's like a function, you can write a function that expresses that and then click and drag the function. Yeah, I'm sure you can get yourself tangled up pretty quick. I mean, you know, so if you want to do like dates, what's the difference between do dates and things like that? There could be a so, difficulty doing that, right? Two, or not, not powers of two. It, it's basically squaring each each cell is the square of the previous cell. Um, now, at a certain point, here's another one. This is just saying the cell isn't big enough to hold the number. Or actually, maybe no, that's maybe that one's just well. yeah. I think you exceeded the calculation capability of the yeah. spreadsheet. You, you do occasionally get one where the result is just too big to be displayed, and then you just like, open up the graph a little bit. So that'd be an example of doing it with a function. I wonder why it decided that instead of doing 2, 4, 6, 8, even though Because of the way I wrote it. Oh. Okay, it's a it's a calculation, not a, a number. Okay, yeah. just that. Sorry. You know, I just I just wrote down a quick function, and it just it, that's just the way I happen to write it. Um, so um, So that's a list that's built in. Um, I could also uh, <laughs> assuming I can spell. So 
that's ignoring the case. So does it mean if you were to grab Tuesday and Wednesday and went up, it would rewrite Monday and Sunday? I didn't need to grab two of them, just one. But that, that's sufficient there. And so on. So. You may be asking yourself, my gosh, where does all that come from? Now, you have in the tools menu, and this is on all of LibreOffice, there's tools options. Now this is, this has a lot of stuff for just LibreOffice in general, as well as specific stuff. So you could come in here and start filling in your information. Right now, all it knows is on this Linux box, my username is Kevin. Okay. So it grabbed that. But I mean, I could go in and fill all of this out if I wanted to. Um, so here's LibreOffice Calc. So there's a number of things you can do. You can say measurement unit. And you say, oh yeah, inch makes sense, unless, of course, you lived in another country. Right? Uh, I did something for Hacker Public Radio where I created a brochure, and I did it two ways, one on letter size for Americans and one on A4 for Europeans, and I changed the units around, and this is how you would do stuff like that. By default, it creates three sheets in a new document. I usually, you know, if I'm going to be working in it for any length of time, will turn this back to one and then just add sheets if I need them. Because most of the time, I only want one sheet anyway, and why did I create three? And just, you know, some display and page break stuff. And sort lists, this is where it picks that up, all right? So in other words, it has lists in there that it knows about. Yeah, I don't recognize that last one. That must have been interesting. I'm so. pretty sure that's Jewish. Okay, all right. So months in the Hebrew calendar. All right. All right, now, suppose you wanted to add one. And the example I always give for something like this is say, you know, you're doing a financial analysis and your company has six major departments and you're going to report on those six departments all the time, create a list. So just go in there, just start typing. you create, you know, you can add. And you come in here and yeah, that'll work the same way. Is that uh, commonly used in Microsoft Excel and some of the others? Uh, yeah, there's a similar capability there. Um, I don't remember in Excel where exactly you find it, and that probably depends on which version of Office yeah. you're on. Yeah. Um, up through Office 2003, I was pretty much an expert user. And then they, they screwed everything up, and I've never been able to find anything since. <laughs> 2007, so, was it? So, I mean, I have to use it at work, but. I really have no idea what I'm doing there any longer. It's sad in some ways. Um, so, how do we use this effectively? As I said, I wanted to talk about how to think about this stuff. 
when you see what we did with filling columns, that is the key to doing a good job here. All right? Now, I used to teach a course in corporate finance. And one of the things that my students had to do was they had to create a business plan. And this would have been Microsoft Excel, because that's what I was given there. So they would, they create a business plan, and then I would say, and you have to do what is called what-if analysis. And what-if analysis is based on the idea, change one variable and see what happens. So if it's a business plan, you might say, what if the price of one of your key inputs changes, or the price of your product changes, or you know, there's more competition in the market, whatever. You, you start playing around with the variables to see what happens. And spreadsheets make that extremely easy. And that's one of the things that really pushed adoption of spreadsheets in companies was that it enabled you to do something that previously was very difficult. And suddenly, you know, everyone could do it on their desktop. Yeah, I got a good example of that my dad was uh, working in a, and he had you know, a number of employees and all that stuff in his company he worked for. And he had, you know, basically it was the paper and pencil approach to, you know, keeping track of this stuff. And mm -hmm. I, you know, it was like 1984 or something like that. I had, I don't know, it was Lotus 1, 2, 3 or something like that on a PC, you know, with, uh, IBM PC. And I started, you know, put some of that information into a spreadsheet so I'm sure change one number and boom, you know, you got all this stuff. And so we put in some of the personnel information, the, the rates that people were being paid. You could, you know, say what would, what would happen if we changed this particular type of, uh, you know, employees uh, pay to a different number and, you know, mm -hmm. just really blew his mind, really made it, you know, much, much more simple for him to do some of the things he did. Nowadays, though, I see people that are just going way over in this and building, like you say, an entire database, you know, structures and their input forms and, you know, doing all the analysis and presentation materials and... Yeah. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to do something here to illustrate. Um, I, I would show students how to do something like this, and what I would tell them is, I'm going to go through the body of your spreadsheet. I'm going to click on every cell, and I'm going to see what the contents are. And if I see a number, you lose a point. So I'm going to show you exactly what that's about. So if I gave you a blank spreadsheet, I wouldn't lose any points. <laughs> um, no, it's not that simple. And the reason I say that is a spreadsheet cannot, you can't do what-if analysis if you can't instantly recalculate on the basis of a single change. So how do you do that? So I'm going to do a very simple model. Um, and to do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put in some assumptions. And I'm going to assume I can spell. So the first thing I would do is say, whenever you're building a model, put all of your assumptions, parameters, whatever you want to call them, in a special area. And that's the only place where I'll let you type in numbers. Right. I'll 
except I'm going to index this column. But let's say twenty fourteen. Now, you know, when I was teaching, um, you know, I had a lot of traditional undergrads, so you know, they're twenty, twenty one, something like that. And one of the things I tried to explain to them is you need to build some time in. <coughs> so there's a uh, 40 years. You could have done that in the assumptions too. I, I could have. Start year and number of years. Mm-hmm. And uh, 